Voice introduces Bahamaland, an unlimited nationwide calling plan for only $5 a month. So call home today and connect again with Bahamaland. Home never felt so close. An American man and his dog stabbed to death on Grand Bahama. The commissioner of police carefully looking into the re-election of the PSA chairman. A former deputy prime minister weighs in on the BTC deal. Plus, this lucky Grand Bahama native wins Cable Bahamas Limited's mega giveaway. Those stories and a whole lot more on the way. I'm Bonnie Toot, and NB12 Weekend starts now. Topping news tonight, an American man is dead tonight after being stabbed to death at his home on Grand Bahama. It's the country's ninth murder for the year and that island's first for 2014. Now, according to police reports, a Caucasian male believed to be in his 40s was found at a home on Albacore Drive bound with duct tape shortly after 10 last night. He reportedly had multiple stab wounds. Assistant Commissioner Felice M. Rick Seymour told NB12 today the victim's dog was also stabbed to death. EMS personnel reportedly rushed the man to Ram Memorial Hospital where he was pronounced dead. Seymour says he lived in Grand Bahama for several years but could not say more than that. Homicide detectives returned to the murder scene this afternoon to conduct further investigations. Seymour says at this point they have no motive and no suspects. Authorities on Grand Bahama are also investigating a traffic accident that claimed the life of a 25-year-old man this morning. Police say the victim was traveling west along Sunrise Highway around 4 a.m. when he lost control of his silver 2002 Honda Civic and crashed into a tree on the median. The victim was pronounced dead on the scene and the vehicle was extensively damaged. Days after Inspector Dwight Smith was re-elected chairman of the Police Staff Association, Commissioner Felice Allison Greenslade has asserted the force must have standards. Smith was elected to the PSA's board and subsequently entered the chairman race unopposed less than a week after he was charged in a magistrate's court with indecent assault. Though the commissioner was careful not to mention the case that's before the courts, he told NB12 the matter of Smith's re-election has his attention. The commissioner is going to say it's a difficult issue because we have to have standards, all right? And so I'm going to say that. And as a commissioner, I'm still held accountable, um, um, certainly by the Bahamian people. So while I don't want to offer any disrespect um, to the process or to personalities, I'm going to tell you, our people in this country are not stupid. And so if, if a police officer um, is taken before a criminal court and is interdicted from duty, then the law is very clear on the restrictions that impose on such an officer. Greenslade says certain rules apply when an officer is interdicted from duty. You can't work without the permission of the commissioner. You're on half pay. You're still subject to all the rules and, and uh, regulations of the police department. Um, but discipline is now the priority, meaning that umbrella is, is what you uh, uh, fall under. Uh, so you, so it, th there are no separate systems. It, it can be that um, uh, that is suspended and this is a new life. It doesn't work like that. The police commissioner says he's having a careful look at the situation. Um, because I believe it would be wrong for us to um, shake the confidence and trust of the Bahamian people generally and to shake the confidence and trust of police officers. And so hopefully that does not disrespect anyone, but to simply tell you, uh, I'm alert to what you've asked uh, of me, and, uh, and, and certainly um, it has my attention at the moment. I did some work yesterday and we'll do some more work today and um, we'll see where we go. 
Former Deputy Prime Minister Brent Simonet had dismissed the government's deal to reacquire majority shares in the Bahamas telecommunications company as an attempt to save face following nearly two years of take-back talks. Simonet is the latest senior Free National Movement member to hit out at the Christie administration over the deal, which the party says changes nothing. And despite repeated claims by the government that the deal signed by the Ingram administration was a bad one, Simonet says he stands by it. This is an exercise in, in saving face, yeah. Instead of empowering Bahamians by selling 9% of BTC shares to the public, Simonet says the Christie administration wasted time worrying about 2% and still ended up with no voting control. In fact, according to a CWC statement, when all transfers are completed, CWC will hold a marginally larger number of BTC shares than the government. Additionally, CWC will maintain management and board control of the business. Well, local, local press are saying there's no change in management structure, so you're not gaining any real input. You're putting 2% into a trust fund or a foundation. You've, you've done nothing. As part of the new deal, 2% of CWC's 51% shareholdings will be placed in a foundation that will hold the shares in trust for the Bahamian people. The income from the reacquired shares will be used for civic and charitable initiatives, crime fighting and improving local access to technology. However, Simonet pointed out, BTC is already a philanthropic company. One of the things we shouldn't be fooled about, BTC gave substantial money to charity or philanthropic purposes. And they, they sponsored one of the Junkanoo groups. You've ever seen them, they're giving money to this. Most big companies set aside X percent of their revenue to give to charity. Simonet says what Prime Minister Christie should have done was follow through on his predecessor's plans to sell 9% of BTC shares to Bahamians. Uh, if I was the Prime Minister, I would have followed through, and I don't want to be. Okay, so please answer that. Um, I would have taken the opportunity to say, fine, 10% of Batelco, BTC is worth whatever. Sell it to the Bahamian public, take that money, and apply it to the national debt and reduce the rate of VAT we were going to charge. Simple. You, and then you empower Bahamians. That's what this whole exercise when we were the FNM in government was about. He noted that if Bahamians buy into BTC, they would be less inclined to move over to its competitor when the company's monopoly ends this year. Cold temperatures have kept much of the Bahamas bundled up for the past two weeks, and officials from the Department of Meteorology say this winter weather isn't going anywhere anytime soon. They say temperatures drop nearly 10 degrees below the monthly average. Jasmine Bonamy has the details in this report. A series of cold fronts over the past few weeks have seemingly brought low temperatures here to stay, forcing many to break out those sweaters and scarves not normally seen in the Bahamas. And according to meteorologist Wayne Neely, there is no end in sight for those looking for relief. As temperatures continue to dip, Neely says we're in it for the long haul. Cold fronts are poised to keep the thermometer on the lower end at least through the next week. We've been having a lot of cold polar air uh, coming down mm -hmm. with these fronts. The air originates over Canada and the cold pole, because the winds are from the north, you're going to get those cold, uh, cold, cold fronts. And he added that the coldest temperatures felt so far during the recent cold snap was on Wednesday when temps dipped to 55 degrees Fahrenheit. According to Department of Meteorology statistics dating back to 1971, the average low for the month of January is 63.4 degrees Fahrenheit. Those statistics also indicate January is typically the coldest month, with February coming in a close second with temperatures of 64.3 degrees, followed up by March, which has 65.4 degrees. But he says the coldest day on record occurred in January 1947. That's basically about 38 degrees Fahrenheit, so it's far from the record that, that we've gotten. That, that remains the coldest temperature on record. Neely says typically temperatures are warming up, but only by less than a degree each month. The winds are basically um, similar, same, and the fact of the matter is that most persons blame global warming, whether it's too cold or it's too warm, where you have intense hurricanes or not intense hurricanes. Global warming always seems to get the blame, and most of the times it's basically just, uh, just a fluctuation in, in the climate and the weather. Reporting for NB12, I'm Jasmine Bonamy.